1997, Salt with you. Hey guys, welcome to church, welcome to Salt. This is a really exciting Sunday. This is the last Sunday that we'll be streaming just on YouTube and Facebook. We will be meeting live in Bombardieri next Sunday, the 5th of July. Come and join us at 10 o'clock. You know, we've been doing this series on love over the last few weeks. We've been talking about what love looks like, how God loves us, and that He fills us up with His love so we are able to give His love. So we wanted to speak this morning about the what is love in action? What practically does love look like? And Paul gave us this amazing roadmap for this in Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 9. And he goes on and says this, he says, Love must be sincere. It is not fake. It is not sugar-coated. It is sincere. It has to be from the heart. If we don't love from the heart, it is an action. It is not what God intended. God died on the cross to reconnect his love with us so we could be filled up with him. So we get all our our, um, our authority from him. We get all our self-esteem from him. We get all our self-worth from him, which enables us to love others no matter what they do. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourself. This is the resounding theme that comes from God all the time. It's not loving people because they deserve it. It's not based on performance and behaviour. It is always loving people beyond yourself. It's always loving people that can't help yourself. It's always loving people because it's not a choice to just let people be your friend. It is a choice to love because Jesus did it first. He, from heaven, came and said, I love you. I lavish this love on you. It's not his to hold for himself, for his own gain. It's his to give to us. And that's what love is. It's this, it's this amazing ability to be able to give to others, even though they may not deserve it. Honour one another above yourself. That's a big call. But it's something that's happening within the life of salt right now. Is that people are looking beyond their own selves. People are looking beyond their own resources. People are looking beyond what they want. And they're actually trying to find out what others want and what others need and meeting that need. Verse 11 says this, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in afflictions and faithful in prayer. See, if I was loving you or loving people around me, and I was always doing it with a begrudging look on my face or, oh my gosh, this is really painful. Or, it's really hard to love you. It's not love. See, Jesus went to the cross for us. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. But for the joy of reconnecting you back to the Father, he endured the cross. So when we love... Don't do it with a scowl on your face. Don't do it because you feel you have to. We love because he first loved us. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. I think, I think this is a space that we have done quite well at Salt, is that we've been able to see people in need and we've been able to meet need. Not based on what we think, but based on what God thinks. There's something beautiful about the gospel where Jesus says, I want you to feed the poor. 
I want you to look after those that maybe can't look after themselves or look after those that have lost hope or, or look after those. Because as we look at that, we start to realize that there is no difference between me who lives in a house or, or you that lives in a house or a friend that lives in a caravan or a friend that lives in the, a cave. There is no difference between us. There is just commonality. Verse 14 says, bless those who persecute you. Bless those and do not curse them. And we've, we've spoken about this. We've spoken about how we love those people that want to harm us. We, we love our enemies. But bless those that want to persecute you. Do not fall into the trap of doing what they do and curse them. So look at the people that want to cause you harm and how, how, how do we bless them? We bless them by loving them unconditionally. We bless them by doing what Jesus has done for us, loving us unconditionally no matter what we do, not based on our performance and behavior. We love people that way. And in verse 15, it's, it's so powerful because there's this, there's this culmination of love that comes together. It says rejoice with those who rejoice. It's joining with those. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Laughing with them, celebrate with them. It mightn't be your win, but it's their win, so celebrate with them. It says mourn with those who mourn. So when someone's in, in mourning, we, we, we love on them, we, we cry with them, we, we join with them in their pain. Because that would, that's what Jesus does every day with us. And what he's saying is that you, you, my friend, are Jesus to your neighbor. Who's your neighbor? Anyone that is not yourself. You, my friend, are Jesus to those people, to everybody around you. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Do not think you've got it all together, but humble yourself before him. Be willing to associate with people of low positions. Do not be conceited. I'm not sure about you, but uh, I feel God more when I'm spending time with someone who's living in a cave or just living on the streets and sitting down with them and just sharing with them and loving on them and letting them know they're worth it. That's my favourite part of the week. Paul goes on and says, do not repay evil for evil. Don't let people that do th wrong things pull you into their schemes. But when people do evil to you, love them. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Wow. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. You can't make people do what you do. But love is your decision to meet people where they're at. Love isn't controlling. It isn't judging. It's loving them because you've made that decision to love others the way Jesus has loved you. I just want to pray this morning. Heavenly Father, as we, came, as we come out of this COVID situation and we meet with more and more people, Father, I pray that love abounds. I pray that we put our differences aside and realize that there 
is no first class, second class or third class. There is just us. I pray, Father God, that we see everyone in the circle and no one on the outside of the circle. Because you've included everybody. You love everybody the same. So, Father, give us the love that you have for us and let us freely give it out to others. Give us the spiritual insight to see situations that may be coming against us and instead of us combating them with anger or evil, we combat them with love. Father, let your peace reign in our hearts. Let your rest come in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Have an awesome Sunday and I will see you next week, the 5th of July in our church in Bombardieri. Have a great week. Bye.